Hello everyone and welcome back to Agent of Gash, which is a channel dedicated to Age of Sigma. Now, this is going to be the part 2 of the army video for the Dispossessed, and what we're going to look about in this video is going to be the main unit. So basically, everything that's not a hero, so most of the War Scrolls. And we're going to start off with the uh, like sort of weaker units, then we're going to build ourselves up. So naturally that brings us to the Warriors. When I say weaker, of course, I don't mean they're weak, because... Warriors, you know, out of all the sort of older armies, they're a bit of a tougher group, aren't they, to be fair? So, looking at what they're like in the game, first things first, they're a generic battle line unit. So, this is battle line throughout the whole of order, and then, of course, within the dispossessed army itself. Um, they come in minimum size units of 10, and maximum units of 40. If you take 10, it's going to cost you 80 points. If you take 40, it's going to cost you 280 points. So, obviously, you get an um, Legion discount at that price. And going into their War Scroll. So. They have, on the little wheel first, they've got a movement of 4, they've got a save of 5+, plus. they've got bravery 6, and 1 wound. So first looking at it, so yeah, movement 4 isn't good, however they are very small, you know, people essentially, you know, they've got very small legs, haven't they? So movement of 4, you sort of expect that with dwarves, to be fair. A um, 5 plus save would have liked maybe a better save than that, but you'll see later on the abilities there's a way to do that. Um, bravery 6, that's good to be honest, it's better than I thought it was um, in my... Uh, last video I did for the Dispossessed, I was sort of thinking that they were sort of Bravery 5. So Bravery 6, yep, that's good. Especially for the basic unit, that's nice. And then they have one wound, which is to be expected. Okay, and then going into their melee weapons, and we'll read the description of the unit, just so you know what weapons you can take. So it says, a unit of warriors has 10 or more models. Most warriors enter battle armed with either a Duradon Axe or a Duradon Hammer, but some units prefer instead to wield double-handed doing an axis to cut down their foes with mighty swings many units also carry sturdy duodine shields right okay so the melee weapon so looking at the um duodine axes and duodine hammers and i forgive me if i'm not pronouncing duodine right i feel like i might be doing it wrong but uh, it's just a word isn't it okay so for the first one for the hammer it's got a range of one it's got one attack it's a free to hit a four to wound no render one damage and then the double-handed doing an axe it's got a range of one inch. It's got um, one attack, force to hit, freeze wound, master rent, and one damage. So, yeah, um, obviously the double-handed one is better out of those two weapons. However, uh, means you won't be able to take the um, shield. Opposed to if you take the standard um, axe or hammer, you can also have to take a shield as well. So, the double-handed one. It depends what you want them for. If you want them for re breaking through enemy armor, if you're fighting against Stormcast and like that sort of thing, it could be useful. But I sort of see these guys as your battle line units as they are. They are, you know, they these you guys are hold objectives. They're not out there to go and smash face so much. You know, they can take care of themselves so they get involved in some fights. But I would keep these guys definitely more defensive. So going on to their ability, so it says veteran. So the leader of this unit is a veteran. A veteran makes two attacks rather than one. That's nice and easy. Just add an extra dice to your attacks. Um, standard bearer models in this unit may be standard bearers. Standard bearers can carry either a runic icon or a clan banner. And this is hornblowers. Models in this unit can be hornblowers. When a unit containing any hornblowers runs, they can sound the advance. If they do so, do not roll a dice to see how far unit runs. Instead, you can move up to an extra four inches. Okay, so that's good. So that's giving you instead of you know a dice roll, you're getting the good average on a dice roll just granted to you. So yeah, that's a nice um, hornblower ability. And then getting into the real abilities, we have Resolute in Defense. You can re or fail to wound rolls of one when attacking with a warrior in your opponent's combat phase. You can instead re roll failed wound rolls for warriors if the unit has 20 or more models when it attacks in your opponent's combat phase. Okay, so that's good. So it's really sort of encouraging you to take big blocks of these guys, which isn't too hard to do because, like I said, they're, they're not too expensive. And then do it on shields, so a unit equipped with do it on shields can create a shield wall instead of running or charging in its turn. If it does, re-roll failed save rolls for the unit in the combat phase until its movement phase. So like I said, they only have a 5 plus save, but there was a way to make it better. By taking the um, shields, you can do that, and I really feel like that is needed for these guys. Look, you put them on the objective, they basically make the um, shield wall, they're not going to move, and then they you know, re-roll on their failed, failed save rolls, which is really big particularly how the dispossess themselves can't do mystic shield yes they can ally someone in or something along those lines but they can't it's quite harder for them to get the rerolls to save so this is definitely nice okay and then going on to the banner so we've got the runic icon so roll a dice if a spell affects a unit with a runic icons 
on a roll of a five or more that spell has no effect on the unit but it will affect other units normally okay so firstly what i'd like to say about this my experience when i fought against dispossessed i mainly thought about them um, uh, before second edition of age of sigma and back then there was a few spells knocking around a few powerful ones but nothing really substantial and now the um age of sigma second edition has happened there's like spells are like absolutely everywhere they sort of i wouldn't say they've overtaken shooting by their range power but in some cases they have so being able to ignore spells is really really big now so yeah definitely put a runic icon in this unit and then we've got the clan banner so if you fail a battleship test for a unit that has any clan banners half the number of models that flee rounding up okay so this is good as i've talked about in the allegiance abilities is that um you know if you roll for a battleship test and you get a one two and three if you dispossess units they're not running anyway and then if you're unlucky and they do run um you're just halving the number of models so let's say like you've taken a massive hit uh, battle shocks came you're going to lose like five models to battle. Well, let's make it a nice easy number let's say you're going to lose um, which can happen you know something like 10 models who so you're taking a really big hit um, now you're only losing five so yeah it can really make a big difference and then going into lastly the keywords they've got order druidin dispossessed and warriors so so pretty standard what we expected i mean obviously dispossessed is important but this is pretty much going to be the same for all the units in this army apart from obviously the warrior keyword will get switched out with whatever war scroll um, it is okay so now that we've looked at the warriors which are, like i say they're not you know really base infantry but you know they're the basic infantry for the um dispossessed here so and now we're going to move on to something a bit more interesting and this is going to be the crawlers so uh, what i can tell you about them is that they're an other unit uh, role so they're not a battleline unit or you know um, artillery or anything like that they have a minimum size unit of 10, a maximum size unit of 30, and they're going to cost you 120 points for 10, and there's no Legion discount if you're taking the max size unit. So uh, those are its points in like roll in the game, and then actually looking at its war scroll, what I can tell you about them is, looking at the description, it says the unit of Chorus has 10 or more models. They go to war armed with Duradine, crossbows, and ranger axes. Some units of Chorus are also equipped with Duradine bucklers. So looking at their stats so they've got a movement of four inches they've got a five plus save they've got bravery six and they've got one wound so the same stats as we saw before um these guys are going to be out of combat a little bit more so so the five plus save doesn't matter as much unless you're playing against like a heavy shooting army and then going into their weapons so they've got two so they've got a missile weapon and they've got a melee weapon and they'll get both of these so they've got a range of 20 inches for the Duradine crossbow, it's got one attack, force a hit, force a wound, no rent, and one damage. And then the melee weapon, which is the ranger's axe, it's got range of one, uh, one attack, force a hit, force a wound, no rent, one damage. So, um, first of all, I want to say is the um, crossbow is pretty good, 20 inch range. I know, like, there's things in Age Sigma that have, like, ridiculous range, but 20 inches, you know, it's respectable, it's not bad. And um, to hit into wound on a four, yeah, that's good. And the melee weapon, um, just being a four and a four um, to hit and wound is good, especially how it's usually like a five and a five for you know like a range unit. So yeah, that's respectable there. And um, like I said, these guys, yeah, you're not doing like multiple damage or you're not doing like rend that sort of thing. Um, however, what you will be doing is chucking so many um, shots of the enemy, it'll be hard enough for them to deal with it without them having any rend. Unless the bloody Stormcast army are too upset, you're rolling ones, then you're screwed if you don't have a rend. And I know this, I think there's like a rune lord that can put like rend on these guys, which I've had done to me, and that can definitely make them more nasty. Okay, so then going on to the abilities, we have the um, veteran. So the leader of this unit is a veteran. You can add one to hit rolls for a veteran when he fires his dual and crossbow. So yeah, that's good. Obviously, you know, you just get a leader, don't you? However, just make a different dice for him or something so you can remember that he's getting plus one. And then we've got the standard bearers. So models in this unit may be standard bearers. Standard bearers can either carry the runic icon or the clan banner. So I have a sneaking suspicion that's going to be exactly the same as the dwarf warriors, but I will read for it just to be safe. Okay, and then it says drummers. So models in this unit can be drummers. When a unit containing any drummers runs, they can sound the advance. If they do so, do not roll a dice to see how far the unit runs. Instead, they can move up to an extra four inches. So exactly the same as we saw before. Um, and then we go on to the real abilities. So we've got volley fire. So quarters can shoot twice if their unit has 20 or more models and there are no enemies within three inches. So basically these guys aren't in combat, you know, instead of them making one attack each, they're making two attacks essentially in the shooting phase. 
which is um, really quite good because especially if you take max size units of 30 which i have gone against um they're making 60 shots of you um and yeah that's pretty devastating and if you can put the rune lord's ability on it 60 shots of minus one rend if that does work um yeah it's pretty nasty okay and then we've got the uh, runic icon so roll a dice when a spell affects this unit yeah on a five plus they get to um, ignore it so that's good and then the clan banner yeah that makes you half the uh models that run to battle shock so that's all good there and then Duodon Bucklers, if this unit is equipped with Duodon Bucklers, it can create a shield wall instead of running or charging in its turn. So if it does so, reroll all failed save rolls for this unit in the combat phase until its next movement phase. So yeah, this is the same as what we saw before really. Um, but it's even better these guys because they're less likely to be moving around the battlefield so much. Um, unless you know like you really need to get them to places and so on, they're pretty much going to stay where they are because they haven't got bad range. So yeah, that's good. Reroll and all fail save rolls for if the enemy does charge you, you know, you've got a little bit of protection, or if the enemy's just trying to pick you up for shooting, it's gonna be harder for them to do it. And then going on to the keywords, they've got order, do it on, dispossessed, and quarrelers. So yep, standard what we expect there. So those are the quarrelers. Now, I don't know about you, but I always like a bit of black powder. So we're gonna move on to the thunderers. Now the thunderers, they come minimum size units of 10, maximum size units of 30, and they cost 120 points for a unit of 10. They get no uh, legion discount if you take a maximum size unit of 30, and they have the other roll unit. So they're exactly the same really as their sort of, well they are to be fair, their points and their uh, roll in the game is the same as the quarrelers. So and then going on to what their stats actually say about them, so looking at the description it says a unit of thunderers has 10 or more models. They go to war armed with doing on handguns which at a pinch can be used to bludgeon foes in close combat. Some units of thunderers are also equipped with duodine bucklers. So, looking at the missile weapons, and of course we're going to be starting with the duodine handgun, so that's where you bring this unit, obviously. Um, it's got a range of 16 inches, it's got one attack, force to hit, freeze wind, monster for rent, and one damage, so four inch um, less range than the quarrels. However, it has got a better to your wound characteristic and it has got rend already. So that is all good there. And yeah, that's a pretty good one. Obviously quite short range, but you'd be able to shoot over like enemy lines and fortifications and that sort of thing. So that's pretty good there. Then the next missile weapon is a brace of Duodine pistols and that's a weapon what the uh, veteran gets. So we're going to look at that in a moment. And then going into the melee weapon, so we've got the Duodine handgunners. Handguns in close combat, but they want to bludgeon the enemy with. So they've got a one inch range, a one attack, force to hit, fires the wound, no rend, and one damage. So yeah, not as good as the quarries there. However, you know, it's, it's not five and five, is it? You're still getting a four to hit, so it could be worse. And then the brace of Duodine pistols again, we'll look at that in a moment. So going on to the ability, so it says you've got the standard bearer. So models in this unit may be standard bearers. Standard bearers can either carry runic icons or clan banners. I'm pretty sure that's going to be exactly the same as the other two units we looked at. And then the veterans. So the leader of this unit is a veteran. Some veterans fight with a dual and a handgun, but others prefer a brace of pistols. You can add one to the hit rolls for a veteran when he fires a dual and a handgun. So if you do go for the handgun, that means he's hitting on a free and then wounding on a free. However, you go for the Brace of Duodon Pistols, so that has got a range of 8 inches, so half the range of the handgun, but it's got 2 attacks, force to hit, freeze the wound, minus 1 rend, and 1 damage. And then going on to the melee version of that, we've got um, well, 1 inch range, 2 attacks, force to hit, force the wound, no rend, and 1 damage. What I would say, it depends what you want from this unit, if you really don't want them to try and get into combat and you're going to protect them and all that sort of thing. Um, I would say go with the um, handguns because you want to be shooting um, have maximum range capacity. However, if you haven't got too much protection for these guys and you think you know they're inevitably going to get closer and closer to the enemy, go for the brace of pistols, which is a better shooting attack. Um, you know, you get an extra attack there, and also in combat it's a bit better as well. I want to say it's a bit better. I mean, it's getting an extra attack in combat and a better hit characteristic. So yeah, it is better if you want to be close to the enemy with this unit. Or when I say when you want to, you probably don't want to, but in case you get sort of trapped. Right, and then going on to the drummers, so this is basically, instead of running, you can just run um, 4 inches, so that's good. It's the same as it was before. Um, ability, so you've got precision fire, so you can add one to hit rolls for funders if the unit has 20 or more models, and there are no enemy models within 3 inches. So, this now means the unit is hitting on freeze and then wounding on freeze, and then going back to the veteran, if you take him with the handgun, he gets plus on the hit there, so he'd be like hitting on a 2 and wounding on 3, which is who do you cash, just, even if it's just for a 1 damage weapon. Still nice. Um, so yeah, you want to take max size unit of these guys to really make the most of them. 
and then you've got the runic icon so that's the one on if they get affected by a spell on a five up they get to ignore it and the clan banner so um you half the amount of models that flee to battle shock which is good and then do nine bucklers um so that means that this unit is equipped with a Dunham Bucklers, so it can create a shield wall instead of running or charging in its turn. If it does so, you can reroll all failed save rolls for the unit in the combat phase until its next movement phase. Okay, so something important to note here, um, it is only going to be in the combat phase for this, and I think I said for the quarries that, you know, it's good for um, if the enemy is trying to shoot you off, you can reroll those save rolls. I was wrong about that, guys. I just misread it, basically. Um, so yeah, it's only going to be in the combat phase, so do bear that in mind, enemy shooting is going to negate this. So, those are its abilities and stuff, and then going into the keywords, it's got Order, Duodine, Dispossessed, and Thunderers. So, you know, very standard there. So, yeah, they're the Thunderers. Um, I think they're quite a uh, good unit. Um, I do like the um, aesthetic of these guys, you know, they're dwarves with handguns, what's not to like. And, um, yeah, I mean, like, sure, there's better shooting things out there, but I'm sort of thinking what's better them or the quarries i think as a shooting unit i would say the thunders yes they have a bit less range but they've got more sort of firepower to back that up right okay and then we've looked at the thunders so the next unit we're going to look at we're going to take it up a notch in the sense of combat effectiveness and that is going to be the long beard so obviously a lot of lore behind the long beards and stuff what we sort of talked about in the lore video they're very you know they're the grumblers essentially they are the ones that hold the grudges for the longest and the most out of all of the dispossessed uh, units i think is safe to say so going into what they're like in the game uh, more importantly so like talking about points and stuff essentially they are the good thing about these guys is that they are battle line and that is generic battle line for the army which is nice um, they come in size units of 10 and they have max size units of 30 they cost you 100 points for 10, or they cost you 270 points for attacking max size units, so you're getting a 30, 30 point discount, which isn't the most discount, but it's still a discount, isn't it, at the end of the day? And the 30 points can really, um, you know, by the end when you've built your list, can really mean, oh, I've got like an extra 30 points, means I can add this thing in and stuff, so um, because of, you know, how many points you had left over. Right, okay, and then going in to see what they're like in the game. Firstly, looking at the description, so a unit of longbeards has 10 or more models. Some units of longbeards wield treasured ancestral axes or ancestral hammers other units prefer to march to war wielding double-handed ancestral axes to cut down the foe in addition some units carry sturdy grimreal shields so looking at their stats so looking at the wheel first we've got a movement of four inches four plus save bravery seven and one wound so yep a save of a 4 plus is really nice to start seeing that. I would sort of like all the Dispossessed units to have a 4 plus save as they are sort of, you know, they look armoured compared to a lot of the other races. However, that's not the case. So it's nice to see it for these guys. Bravery 7, yep, that's definitely taken up a notch. Um, it's got a wound of 1, which, you know, standard, and a movement of 4, which I think we're going to see across the board for this army, in all honesty. And then going into its melee weapons, so, depends which one you want to take, but if you take the Ancestral Axe or the Ancestral Hammer, you've got a 1 inch range. You've got one attack, you've got freeze to hit, force of wound, no rend, and one damage. And then the second one is the Ancestral Great Axe. So it's got one inch range, one attack, force to hit, freeze to wound, minus one rend, and one damage. So we're going to see what the sort of shields give you in the um, abilities and stuff. But I'm sort of thinking these guys are more going to be on the offensive side of your army. So maybe the Great Axe might be worth taking. Okay, and then going on to the ability so we've got the old guard so the leader of this unit is an old guard an old guard makes two attacks and then the standard bearer so models in this unit may be standard bearers um, if you fail a battle shot test for a unit that has any standard bearers half the number of models that flee rounding up okay so it appears that they don't have the same as the last one so they have you know the half in guys who flee to battle shock but they don't have the one against um you know magic so that's worth noting there and then we've got the throng musician so models in this unit can be horn blowers or drummers when a unit containing any horn blowers or drummers runs they can sound the advance if they do so um you do not roll dice and they just move the um four inches like we've seen with the other units and then looking at the real sort of ability so we've got the grum wheel shield so this unit can create a shield or instead of running or charging in its turn if it does so we roll all failed sables for the unit until the combat phase until its next movement phase okay so what i would say is that obviously that is good because that's the same sort of shields we've seen for the other units 
Um, and I'm saying this unit, you might want to be more offensive with it. I'm sort of going to give my verdict of this unit, I reckon, once I've read through all the other war spells as well, to see if I want them to be offensive or defensive. And then the next ability is the old Grumblers. So long periods are always grumbling about something from the hardships they endured when they were younger and how the youth of today don't respect their elders. So how expensive beer is these days in your hero phase, this unit will complain about something in a suitably dwarven manner. So when they do pick one of the Grumblin listed below the effects last until your next hero phase. So there are um, three by the looks of things. So the first one is I thought Dwarden were made of sterner stuff. So roll a dice each time a dispossessed model from your army flees whilst within eight inches of this unit on a five or more that model stands firm under the long beards stern gaze and does not flee so this, throughout the whole army here i'm really starting to see like loads of ways for your models not to flee in the battle phase so that's good this is just another one and the nice thing about it is not wholly within eight inches it's just whilst within eight inches so that's good um then again it's model so i suppose it would only just be uh within eight inches anyway okay then going on to the second one so it says who does this beardling think he is so dispossessed heroes from your army within eight inches of this unit in the common phase can use their command abilities even if they are not your general okay um that is a bit interesting because you can use your command abilities anyway if you're not the general but you don't pay a command point to do it so i think this rule might be a little bit old yeah unless it keep you can do it without spending a command point but it doesn't say that so yeah this ability is a bit negated unfortunately so you, ju you just won't be picking that one essentially and then it says the next one is grots are weedier these days so you can reroll wound balls of one for dispossessed models from your army that are within um eight inches of this unit when they attack in the combat phase okay so um yeah like this unit is not bad in combat and you might want to give it the shield so to just keep it alive um, because it's going to benefit the rest of your army you know if you just sort of have it in the middle of your sort of force and um, just give it the shield so it's a bit more survivable um, and just makes it a, you know benefit the rest of your army you know because even if it's just like reducing the amount of models that flee to battle shop or the rerolls um, of wound rolls of one for distressed models within eight inches eight inches is loads of range but bear in mind you're taking a minimum size units of 10 of these guys so that actually just stretch out to quite a bit of range so yeah um I'd say they're more of a supportive unit than a combat unit. Um, that's how I look at them anyway. And then looking at the keywords, they've got Order, Duden, uh, Dispossessed, and Longbeards. So, yep, very standard there. And like I said, I think they could be a quite a good supportive unit for the army. We just take like, you know, 10 of these guys. And they count as a battle line unit, don't they, as well. So they add towards your free for a 2,000 point army. Right, and then taking up another notch in the combat effectiveness for the Dispossessed, we have got the Hammerers. So... They are a battle line unit in a dispossessed army, so you're taking dispossessed legions. These again are going to be a battle line unit, so they are towards your free, so that's good. They come in size units of 10 and maximum size units of 30. They are 160 points for 10 or 420 points for 30. So you get the legion discount there if you're taking maximum size units. And then looking at the war scroll for this unit, looking at the description, it says a unit of the hammers has five or more models. They are armed with Grommel Great Hammers. And if you're wondering why it says five or more models, just thought I'd, I'd read it out just to make it a bit clear to you guys in case some of you are quite new and you don't understand. Um, that is how you can take them in things like um, open play and narrative play. But if you want to take them in match play, which is really what I sort of focus on, um, you need to take them in unit sizes of 10. So just ignore that bit on the war scroll essentially. Okay, and then looking at the stats, it's got a movement of 4 inches, they've got a 4 plus save, a bravery 7 and 1 wound, so the same as we saw for the longbeard, so yep, that's good. They come also from the same kit as the longbeards when you buy them, so um, yeah, they would be sort of similar, wouldn't they? And then we've got the immediate weapon, so we've only got one, and it's the Grumreal Great Hammer, so it's got a 1 inch range, 2 attacks, 3 to hit, 3 to wound, minus from rend, and 1 damage. Lovely to hit into wound cast resistance there, and it's got a rend, and yeah, only 1 damage, but you know, it's fair enough, just 1 hammer, isn't it? And 2 attacks, which is nice. And then we've got the Throng Musician. So models in this unit can be horn blowers or drummers. And then it basically says again, instead of you know rolling a dice see when you run, they just move four inches, which is good. Um, standard bearers, they've only got the standard bearer that gives them the um, uh, half in the number of models that flee to battle shock. They haven't got the one that ignores um, spells. And then the keeper of the gate. So the leader of this unit is a keeper of the gate. A keeper of the gate makes three attacks rather than two. So three attacks. 
uh, with that weapon is pretty good. And then the ability is King's Guard. And what it does is it says you do not need to take battleship tests for this unit if it is within 6 inches of a dispossessed hero from your army in the battleship phase. Okay, it's just an other way to negate battleship for a unit and dispossess. It's like they're almost stacking up. I can't even remember how many there are now. Um, but yeah, that's good. So if, if they are within 6 inches of a dispossessed hero, so not even wholly within 6 inches, so easily enough to do for these guys. So basically they're never taking battleship. If you can keep that synergy going, which isn't going to be too hard to do. So yes, I do like them. And then they've got keywords ordered, uh, Druidon. Dispossessed and hammers. So yeah, I think these guys are a lot more um, more offensive than your long beards. I'd say give your long beards the um, shields, make them a bit better in um, defense for um, for when they give those buffs off and stuff. You don't really want them to die, and take these guys as your heavy hitters. Out of the two from the same kit, yeah, I'd say these guys are the heavy hitters and the long beards, and you're sort of more defensive. And I say give a bit more synergy to the rest of your army. Right, okay, and then moving on to our next one, which is going to be, again, a step up, but this time in defense, and this is, of course, going to be the Iron Breakers. Now, the Iron Breakers, they are a battle iron dispossessed army, so that is good. They come in size units of 10 and max size units of 30. Um, they cost 140 points for 10 and 360 points for 30, so you are getting a Legion discount there. Uh, looking at the description, it says... A unit of Iron Breakers. It says has five more models, but we know in match play it's ten. Um, Iron Breakers are clad in suits of Grummill armor. Each Iron Breaker goes to war armed with an Iron Breaker axe or hammer in one hand and a sturdy Grummill shield in the other. And then, uh, so yep, yeah, okay, we got to know a little bit of description. Then looking at the stats, so they've got a movement of four inches, they've got four plus safe. Seven bravery and one wound, so the same as we've seen for the last couple of units. Um, then looking at their missile weapons, and this is only a missile weapon which the Iron Beard has, which is the leader of this unit, which we'll get to later, and I'll read through that later. So the melee weapon, so we've got the um, the melee weapon for the um, Iron Beard, which again, like I said, is the leader, we'll get to later. And getting on to one we are going to talk about is the Iron Breaker Axe or Hammer. So this is what you standard guys and units get, so it's a one inch range, two attacks, three hit, force of wound, no rend one damage. So yeah, pretty standard there. Shame there's no rend to it, but however, this unit is definitely more defensive than offensive. So then looking at the ability, so we will talk about the iron beard. So the leader of this unit is an iron beard. Some iron beards choose to wield an iron breaker axe or hammer and a grumble shield. An iron breaker makes three attacks with an iron breaker axe or hammer instead of two. Other iron beards are armed with a single Drake fire pistol with which they can shoot um, the foe at range or club them in close combat um, and then it says and a cinder blast bomb whilst some prefer to fight with a drake fire pistol in each hand okay so I'm a little bit still trying to understand uh, this because the first time reading it through is there's quite a lot of text there but I'll tell you what the drake fire pistol does so it's got an 8 inch range 1 attack, 4 to hit, 3 to wound minus one rend and one damage so yeah it's short range but it's got minus one rend to it isn't it not bad to hit to win characteristic and then in the melee weapon um it's got a one inch range one attack uh force to hit force to win no rend one damage so pretty standard there but it's nice that there's not a five into to hit or to wound characteristic okay and then going on to the icon bearers and models in this unit maybe icon bearers roll a dice if an enemy spell affects a unit with any icon bearers on a roll of five or more that spell has no effect on the units but it will affect other units normally so yes that is the um, same as what we've seen for sort of the earlier units that we looked at um, but they don't get the other banner they just get the one against spells which is as long as it's better than the um, standard bear that gives you the um, half and the amount that flee at all because that's a really good ability but this is really useful depending on what army you're going to fight especially against legions and the gash or you know um, as each army's and then we've got the drummer, which means that instead of running, you can just move four inches, um, which is good. And then we've got the ability. So we've got a brace of Drakefire pistol. So you can make two attacks for an Iron Beard armed with more than one Drakefire pistol in both the shooting phase and combat phase. So, yep, that's good. That makes that a lot more effective. Um, or you've got the Cinder Blast Bomb. So once per battle, a model with a Cinder Blast Bomb can throw it in your shooting phase. To do so, pick a unit within six inches and roll a dice on a two or more that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. I like that. So I think out of those two, so the twin, you know, Drake Fire pistols or the Cinder Blast Bomb, um, I like the Cinder Blast Bomb more. I know like, you know, throughout the game, you might end up doing more damage with the um, two pistols, but I think just doing the 
once D3 more wins. Yeah, it's on a two or more and it's only six inch range, but I think if you get off, it's just you're just getting a supercharged arcane bolt on you. So I think that's better. And it's a bomb. Who doesn't like a bomb um, in a dwarf unit? So we've got the Grumreal Shield. This unit can create a shield wall instead of running or charging in its turn. If you do uh, reroll those failed save rolls for the units in the combat phase until the next move phase. Yep, that's good. Um, especially for a defensive unit like this being the Iron Breakers. So then we move on to the Forge Proven Grumreal Armor. So when you make save rolls for this unit, ignore the enemy's rain cash unless it is minus two or better. So they've basically got, you know, the Star Drake Shields from the Surf one, which just makes this unit even tougher to try and grind through. And I've been stuck in um, combat with a unit like this, even I've got minus one, it's just like a massive grind fest in all honesty. And that's like coming from a death army. So um, yeah, when these guys are sitting on a place they don't want to move from, Include an objective, they're pretty hard to shift. Okay, and then we got the keywords. So they've got ordered, Duradin, dispossessed, and iron break. So yeah, you know, just standard really, isn't it? So yes, those are the iron breakers, which are you know the most offensive unit the dispossessed have, um, and you can really see why there. Okay, so then going on to the next unit, it's going to be the last unit we're going to look at here for the dispossessed, and that is going to be the iron breakers. Now I've saved them to last because they're a bit of a special unit. They've got quite a lot going on which is quite nice and then looking to see what they're like points wise and stuff the iron breakers they are for 10 they're going to cost you 140 points um max plus units of 30 is going to cost you 360 points so you will get a, a bit of a discount there and they are battle line and dispossessed army so that's always good to note right and then looking at the description it says a unit of iron drakes has five more models but we know in match play it's ten or more and drakes are clad in suit of grommel armor and are armed with drake guns to shoot the foe at range iron drakes can punch foes in close combat with their mailed fists okay so then looking at the missile weapon so you've got the drake gun six inch range one attack freeze to hit freeze to win minus one rend and one damage so yeah that's nice they're short range but that's nice you've got the um some other special ones as well that we'll get to in a moment when they come relevant in the ability so i'll leave those for now and then you've got the melee weapons so you've got the male fist so it's got a one inch range one attack force to hit force to wound no rend and one damage and then going on to the abilities you've got the iron warden so the leader of this unit is an iron warden some iron wardens wield a trait gun whilst others prefer to go into battle with grudge hammer torpedoes these Iron Wardens are more than happy to punch their foes in the face with their mailed fist. You can add one to the hit rolls for an Iron Warden um, in the shooting phase if um, he has a, a Drake gun. So essentially that means is that there's like special weapons for him to take, but if he takes a normal weapon, he just gets add one to hit rolls. Um, and then it says other Iron Wardens are instead equipped with a single Drake fire pistol with which they can shoot the foe at range, club them in close combat and a cinder blast bomb while some prefer to fight with a drake fire pistol in each hand so that's really similar to what we saw with the iron breakers there and then we've got the icon bear so uh, basically just says um, on a five or more they ignore spells so it's the same as we saw for the iron breakers and no surprise there because you know the iron drakes and the iron breakers come from the same kit and then we've got the horn blowers so which says you know instead of them rolling a dice to see how far they run they just run the four inches which you've seen for the other units of the army Okay, and then going on to the long list of the main abilities here. So we've got the Abrace of Drake Fire Pistol. So you can make two attacks for an Iron Warden armed with more than one Drake Fire Pistol in both the shooting and combat phases. So we looked at it at the last Iron Breaker unit, but we'll remind ourselves what it does. Drake Fire Pistol has got eight inch range, one attack, force to hit, freeze to wound, minus one rend, and one damage. So yeah, not bad, pretty good. Um, and then we've got the Grudge Hammer Torpedo, which I think looks the most awesome anyway. What that does, it stats, it's got a 20-inch range, it's got one attack, it's got three to hit, three to wound, minus two and D3 damage. I like the sound of that a lot. Good range there too. And it's also got a special ability. It says the Grudge Hammer Torpedo. Grudge Hammer Torpedo inflicts D6 damage instead of D3 if the target has the monster keyword. Yep, that's really cool. Um, that's things on, um, obviously, you know, big nasties. Even you're going against like Corner Army, you've got Core Graphs. Some other armies have got like, small monsters as well, it's worth bearing in mind that can do a lot of damage. Then we've got the Cinder Blast Bomb, which is the one we looked at with the Iron Breakers, but I'll read it again. So once per battle, an Iron Warden with a Cinder Blast Bomb can throw it in your shooting phase. To do so, pick a unit within six inches and roll a dice. On a two or more, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. So yeah, that's good. Like I said, it's like a supercharged Arcane Bolt to some certain extent. And then we've got the Forge Proven uh, Gromlet Armor. So when you make 
a save roll for this unit. Ignore the enemy's rain characteristic unless it's minus two or better. So these guys are very defensive as well, like the Iron Breakers. Not as defensive, but pretty defensive as it goes. Uh, and then they've got Blaze Away. So Iron Drakes can shoot twice with their Drake guns if they did not move in the preceding movement phase and there are no enemy models within 3 inches so now that means your shooting attack which is generally really good for this unit is now shooting twice so they get two attacks each um, the something to bear in mind here though just reading it is that it is for your drake gun so it's not like your torpedo where to shoot twice or your um, drake fire pistol so that's why maybe they want you to go for the um, drake gun as well for your um, iron warden for your leader of this unit but I still prefer the torpedo definitely and then Looking at the keywords, they've got the order, duodine, dispossessed, and iron drakes. So, looking at this, um, I would definitely go for the torpedo. No questions asked, just because I think that looks the coolest. And who doesn't want a torpedo in a unit? Um, that's all I'm going to say about that, really. And there might the other ones might be better, but I think that's definitely good, especially if you're going against monsters. You don't really have much other things that can deal with the monsters as well, like specifically in the army. I think that is definitely a good one to go for, unless. You know, something worth noting as well, if you want to pair that with the grudge that was against monsters, I can't remember what that was called, but the one we looked at in the last video, um, it just makes the torpedo even better. Of course, you're not really going to want to tailor your whole army just around one missile weapon. That is not amazing, but pretty good. Yeah, but, you know, it's just a nice little fun thing, I think. And with that, that's going to be the last unit we're going to look at for the Dispossessed. So... Um, yeah, it's been enjoying going through these. Apologies if I was um, trying to like read through the rules uh, several times. Stuff. It's basically the first time me looking at these war scrolls and wanted to make sure I got things right. And yeah, I've actually enjoyed them. They, um, like I said, the dispossessed. I've, I've been saying this from the start. They're not the most competitive army, but they have got a few tricks up their sleeves, uh, certainly. And I've seen it a bit more um, since looking at their war scroll now, which are nice. Some of the units have got quite a lot of rules going on, like the iron drakes and the iron breakers, as an example. Um, there's a bit of synergy from the. Um, long beers, the hammers are quite good, you know, just up front smashing enemy in the face sort of unit. And uh, you've got plenty of missile units in between. So, uh, like I say, that's going to be it for this video. Um, I feel like I've got a bit of a sore throat coming on, guys, so I hope that didn't really come through too much in the video. Hopefully not. Um, but what I will say, guys, is I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. And if you are a dispossessed player, please let me know your sort of tactics and stuff behind your units, what units you field, what units. Um, you think aren't really worth it. If you feel like I've said anything that um, you want to correct, please let me know down in the comments. Um, if you've got any um, tactics, uh, let me know. And yeah, like I say, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And until next time, remember, Nagash is all, and all is one in Nagash. <laughs>